Hi everyone, let's continue the same points, same topic that is production function with one variable factor and one variable factor is labor and there are three stages, stage one, stage two and stage three. I have already explained you stage one, stage two and stage three. We can see here. So all these three stages I'm going to explain you in the curve also. But before, the, before discussing this curve, I would like to share with you TP, AP, MP increases first. This is the first stage and reach maximum and then fall. So TP maximum at 7 units of L, AP maximum at 4 units and MP maximum at 3 labor. So let me check here this table. When the TP maximum at 7 unit, yes, this is the 7th unit. So TP is maximum. After that, it is declining. Right. Then after this, we can say AP maximum at 4 unit. Let's say AP is maximum at the 4th unit. After that, AP is also declining. Right. Then further is MP is maximum at 3 unit, 3 labor. So 3 labor here is, third labor is 16. After that, we can see MP is declining. I hope you understand on which particular labor unit TP is highest and average product is highest and marginal product is highest. Next, we come to the the point of falling is not same for TP, AP and MP. So here is, we can, we can just see all these things here in this curve. You can see stage one. This is the stage one. Stage one is ending at this point. Then after that, stage two from N to M. This is the stage two. Stage two is ending here. And after that onwards, stage three. So now you can see at this stage two, Two, stage 1, where is the stage 2 is starting? At this point, we can say this curve is reflecting MP. This is AP. AP will never intersect, never will go beyond this x-axis. That would always our x-axis. And TP maximum point is here. After that, TP is declining. We can see here. Then we can say at this particular point, AP is equal to MP. AP is equal to means average product is equal to marginal product we can see at this particular point. And here is you can see when initially what happened this this is the MP. MP was first of all it is rising after that it is declining. AP is also rising but after that it is declining. So MP is rising faster than AP. You can see here. This is the AP curve and this is MP curve. So this is the stage one characteristic. So one by one, I'm just correlating both these things. This is stage two. What is happening? Stage two at the way this stage two is finishing, this MP is negative. Means stage three, that is zero point. So now we come to the stage one means increasing return. TP increases at an increasing rate. AP and MP rises in this stage. And that is reflecting here, right? You can see TP is increasing at the rising rate. AP and MP rising in this stage. You can see stage 1. Both these things are rising. Stage 1 ends with AP maximum. Now you can see stage 1, it's Ending at this particular point when AP is maximum. After that, you can see AP is continuously declining. You can see after that, AP is continuously declining. Right? So, here is MP rises till point of inflection. MP is rising. Where is? That is point of inflection. You can see. This is the point of inflection. So, AP is rising till the point of inflection. Then we come to the MP remains greater than AP in stage 1. You can say MP it is always above AP curve, right? And after in the second stage, you can say AP is above the MP curve. So in stage 1, the MP curve, it is means marginal product is always above the AP. Then the MP equal to AP when AP is maximum. Reason for increasing return Y. Fixed factors are larger in quantity relative to the variable factors. So, fixed factors are indivisible. That is, they must be used in a fixed minimum size. 
the fixed factor is underutilized when more units of the variable factor are applied to the fixed factor. The fixed factor is used more efficiently and intensively, thus production increases rapidly. And efficiency of the variable factor also increases due to division of labor and specialization. So I hope because fixed factors are more in quantity as compared to the variable factors, that is my initial, in the initial phase, it is increasing. Second stage, we are calling it diminishing return. Why diminishing return? Because this MP, it is continuously declined. And all these stage, stages name that is on the basis of MP behavior, means marginal product behavior. So next we come to the second stage, diminishing return as both the AP and MP falls, firm seeks to operate in this stage. And here is TP increases at a diminishing rate until it reaches its maximum. You can see that is diminishing in the stage 2. TP is diminishing but at the at this particular point because when it is reaching to the maximum. Then we come to the land and uh, here is AP and MP declines. Stage ends when MP is 0. You can see here at this particular point MP is 0 at this particular point you can see then further we can move to the uh here is land is scarce and is used intensively more and more workers are employed in order to obtain a larger output reason once the point is reached at which the vf vf stands for variable factor is enough to ensure efficient utilization then further increase will cause mp and ap to fall because the because the we can say fixed factors becomes inadequate relative to the quantity of the VF, variable factor. The contribution to the production made by the variable factor after a point becomes less and less. This is due to the disturbing of the optimum factor combination and imperfect substitutability of the factors. So I hope. You understand stage 2 diminishing return. Then we come to the last stage. Stage 3 is negative marginal return. Why we are calling, calling negative marginal return? You can see here because in this curve, in stage 3, MP curve, that is negative. Because beyond this, below this x-axis curve, that is all the values are negative. So we will come to the total product starts to decline and MP becomes negative. It's reflecting here in the third stage. After that, that is the maximum point of the TP. And after that, this TP is declining and MP is negative. Correct? Then we come to the, in a stage third, the quantity of the variable factor is so large compared to the fixed factor. And there is a reduction in the efficiency of the fixed factor, which further result in the fall of the total product instead of rising. So, overcrowding and management problem is there. So, just because of this, that is declining. When production takes place in stage 1, the fixed input is in excess in relation to the variable input. Right? So, that is why in stage 1, that is the fixed, fixed inputs are more as comparatively to the variable input. In stage 3, the variable input is used excessively because we have used these variable inputs a lot. So, this is why it is declining, start declining. The rational entrepreneur will take to operate in stage two, stage 2. So, here is that is the because generally people they don't want to they don't want to uh, stay in the stage 3. They want to run their on organization only in stage 2. After that, if they are declining, they will cover up all these things by reducing variable factor or whatever so this is the this is all about your uh, this um, law of variable proportion we can call it as uh, i had already explained you law of variable proportion we can see law of variable proportion right and also we can call it law of diminishing marginal returns or we can call it law of diminishing marginal productivity so this is the when short term production function with only one variable input in the next video we will discuss production function with two variables that we are calling isoquant and i'm going to discuss in the next video i hope this video would be helpful so thank you and keep watching